All right, welcome back. Police Minister Fakilam Balula says what former Hawks head Burning and Clemeza did yesterday was unlawful. And Clemeza reported for work at the Directorate for Priority Crime Investigation Officers. Now, speaking at the press conference at the same premises, Balula said and Clemeza attended a managerial meeting and instructed that he be given a vehicle and a cell phone of the unit. Last month, a high court found in Clemeza unfit to hold office. Lobby groups Freedom Under Law and the Helen Suzman Foundation obtained another court order enforcing that decision. So in studio with us, uh, Nicole Fritz, the executive officer at Freedom Under Law, uh, is here to hopefully give us a little bit more clarity about that. Good to have you, Nicole. Thanks Thank you. for coming Thanks in. For having me. Um, you know, I think uh, we were chatting all fair, and I think our Minister of Police put it uh, quite aptly, saying that uh, this isn't a movie that you guys are watching. This is not a. This is. This is serious stuff, although it does feel like a movie. I mean, it's playing out like one. What's going on? Absolutely. I mean, and it has elements of, of comedy in it. But I mean, unfortunately, it's, it's a serious matter. Yeah. I mean, it's not doing much, I think, to inspire confidence in the public, in our policing, in the most elite crime fighting unit we have, which is the Hawks. Um, and so I think there has to be clarity yeah. uh, that, that's brought to bear here. Well, let's, let's look at what the law says, because many experts have come in and said, and, and to quote the law, subsection 4 of section 18 suspends the order until the outcome of the appeal. So Burning and Clemeza, according to the law, is allowed to go to work. Yeah, so I mean it is, it, it, it's rather bizarre because we, we um, there was an application on his part for leave to appeal the initial order, which, were, uh, were, which was where the court found that he was not fit and proper, that his, uh, that his appointment should be set aside um, and was essentially null and void. We, um, his uh, appeal, his application for leave to appeal was dismissed. We then applied as Freedom Under Law and Helen Sussman Foundation for immediate execution of that, that order, which is generally suspended during the appeal process, mm. but in exceptional circumstances where it can be shown that um, there will be harm proved if the, if the order is not immediately executed, the court may grant this, which is what the court did. So you would then assume that there was no suspension of this order, yeah. but where this exceptional order is, is granted, there is an immediate right of appeal given uh, the person against, the who, against whom the, the, the order is, is awarded. Um, but that, that appeal must be heard with extreme urgency. Okay. So the Supreme Court of Appeal now must hear this, the appeal relating to the execution of the order with extreme urgency and until that process is, is followed. Essentially, the, the, the order is suspended. What, what do you think is the reason behind Inclemeza's resistance? I mean, when there are so many parties against him, and yet he is still going into the office and he still wants to do his job. He feels he's innocent. Yeah, I don't want to speculate as to his motivations. I just don't know. But I mean, I think it does bear out the kind of the impunity and the, and the, and the lawlessness that has sometimes, you know, appeared to reign within, uh, within the DPCI, within, within the Hawks, um, and, and that under his leadership. And he, and he seems intent that until the end to make that the stamp of his office. Yeah. I mean, I, I was reading in the, in the papers this morning, and whether or not it's true, I'm not too sure, but um, the, the Hawks are saying that they are not paying for his legal fees, that this is coming from his own pocket. That was the, uh, the spokesperson of the Hawks talking. But, you know, I mean, would, would you be privy to this information? I mean, this is a, a very expensive exercise to appeal something like this. I mean, I think, I mean, it, it is a very expensive, uh, expensive process. The, the, the minister has come down and said we want to, you know, adhere to the, the court order, but even before the court handed down its most recent order, the minister withdrew uh, his application for leave and he has done so in respect of the Supreme Court of Appeal process too. Mm. And, and so essentially I think you're, you're having, um, you know, sort of cabinet the executive signal that they're not willing to, to support this process anymore. And there's defiance um, of that on the part of, of uh, Lieutenant yeah. General Clemeza. I mean, what do you think is going to happen today? I mean, yesterday we saw him coming, taking a car and a cell phone, reports saying that he's given it back now, even though uh, the minister said that if he doesn't, they were going to issue a warrant of arrest for him. Today, I mean, another saga? You think he'll pitch up there again? Yeah, I mean, again, given the sort of crazy antics that we saw yesterday, I'm not sure what, what might be seen today. Yeah. I think responsibly, you know, you'd have to assume that... that um, there's going to be no similar scenarios and we will wait for the Supreme Court of Appeal process to play itself out. Do we out. have a date on the appeal? No, not okay, at the so moment. So have, even though you have said this is something we urgently need. I mean, from a law perspective, do you think he has any chance in this appeal? So uh, honestly, I don't think that there is, a, there is any chance on the, on the appeal. You saw, you saw the court, um, the North Gauteng High Court, essentially order um, there and then that... Um, 
uh, that the order was to be executed immediately. Uh, a full bench of, of judges hold that his appointment um, was invalid, that he was not a fit, fit and yeah. proper person, that, um, uh, that you know, what, what was required to be considered in his appointment had not been uh, considered, which was that there were standing court judgments which held him to lack honesty, to be lacking in integrity yeah. and conscientiousness. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming and talking to us here on the program. It's something we, we're all watching um, and we're, we're watching very, very closely as to what's going on. Nicole Fritz, Executive Officer at Freedom Under Law. You'll remember lobby groups Freedom Under Law and the Helen Suzman Foundation obtained that uh, court order enforcing the decision. Thank you for joining us no, here on the program. Thank you.